Worrying about those bills piling up? Dreaming about that coming vacation? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. You are deep in the remote hill country of Afghan, face to face with the fierce Pathan warriors, trapped into a hopeless fight from which there seems no escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape to the north of India and to a battle long remembered, as Rudyard Kipling described it in his famous story, The Drums of the Fore and Aft. When I came out from England to serve as a news correspondent with the British troops on the North Indian border, Regiment No. 329A was called the Four and Fit, Princess Hohenzoller in his own Royal Light Infantry. Four and Fit, but now behind their backs men call them the Four and Aft. You know, when certain words are shouted in front of other barracks, the troops may come out with belts and fists. But the mere whisper of fore and aft brings out the men of this regiment with rifles in their hands and murder in their eyes. I think perhaps the story of how the fore and aft got its name may be really more the story of Jakin and Peggy Liu, two of the toughest and most lovable little monsters who ever banged a drum or tooted a fife in a military band. They were both about the same age, with curly hair and the faces of cherubs. And inside were two souls that should have belonged to a pair of devils. Oh, I must have seen them before, of course. But the first occasion I can recall was an informal regimental court the colonel was holding in the orderly room one morning. Piggy and Jakin were there, and they were in trouble, as usual. All right, Sergeant, read the charges. Yes, sir. The charge is made by one Smithers, a civilian, that while walking back of the bazaar at 6 p.m. last evening, he was set upon without provocation by two drummers from the core band, known as Jakin and Piggy Lou, and by them was beaten into near insensibility. Fighting again. Go on, Sergeant. Mr. Smithers states further that he was struck down by the two defendants and while lying on the ground was kicked repeatedly in the face and ribs escaping with his life only through the timely arrival of a detachment of the guard. That's all, sir. Well, what about it, Jakin? Piggy, is this the truth? Oh, yes, sir. We gave him what for, all right. Con <laughs> Confounded you two little heathens are more trouble than all the rest of the regiment put together. You're hailed in here on charges every time you turn around. I can't very well put you in cells. Or hang you. Oh, no, sir. We shouldn't like that at all. <laughs> that will do, Jakin. Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant. Turn them over to the bandmaster and have them tan their hides. Tell them to make it one they'll remember this time. Yes, sir. Begging your pardon, sir, mm. but can't we see nothing in our own defense? Mm, that's right, sir. What if a bloomin' civilian said he'd report you for having a bit of a turn-up with a friend? Suppose he tried to get money out of you, sir, and that then... That will do, Piggy. Then you were fighting... Well, only between ourselves, sir, and that don't count. If you'll pardon me, Colonel, this man Smithers does have a reputation for that sort of thing, uh, blackmail, you know. And one thing the boys don't do is lie. It's not that we'd mind it, sir, to be called up by even a corporal. But we can't have no blinking civilians interfering with the business of Her Majesty's regiment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll forget the birching. You're both confined to quarters for three days. But, sir... And throw away that pipe when you get outside, Piggy. You're too young to be smoking. Yes, sir. All right, dismissed. Confounded Kipling, I don't know what to do with the lads. They're not really bad at heart. And they've never known any home but the army. Where did they come from, by the way? Oh, Jacob is from some back street in London, and Piggy Lou is straight off the Calcutta docks. 
In both cases, ancestry unknown. Well, they seem loyal enough to the regiment at any rate. They are, and loyal to each other in their own way. I'm inclined to think sometimes they've got more real spirit than all of those new regulars put together. Yes, I'd say you're overloaded with green troops, Colonel. Overloaded? 90% of the regiment were in Manchester factories and Lancashire farms six months ago. Can't make a soldier that late of time. Any uh, chance of action fairly soon? No, off the record, we'll probably move north in about ten days. Not to the front, of course. We'll give them a few months of guarding communication lines. Let them shake down a bit before they see any real action. Yes, yeah, good idea. It's the only thing to do. There's only one thing certain. This regiment is not ready for action yet. Only don't write that back to your paper. But the guards who govern armies seldom choose the wisest plan. On the Afghan border, a large force of Pathan guerrillas began massing near the Khyber Valley, being held in check temporarily by a regiment of Highlanders and a regiment of native Gurkhas. A week later, the four and fit was ordered to march north, contact the other two regiments, and carry out joint action to disperse the enemy. Parade ground and barracks began to hum with preparations for the coming campaign. Privates walked with a new swagger. Subalterns began to snap their salutes and orders. And the young officers nearly shot one another at pistol practice. Battle. A glorious word to men who'd never fired a gun at a human being in their entire lives. But to Piggy and Jakin, the excitement was like salt in an open wound. For the band was reduced to 20 men, and the drummer boys were being left behind. me if I'm going to let him do it to me, Jaikin. Me, what's going to have a career in the army? Being left behind like an old boot. And why should you worry? Now you can stay here with that blooming girl of yours. Oh, what's a girl when the regiment's going up to the front? And that's another thing, too. How am I going to explain to her about being left behind with the women? What do you have to explain anything to her for? She's only 13. Oh, I've been telling her I'd get myself a medal when the first campaign come along. Now am I going to do it now, I ask you? Perhaps the drum major will give you a blooming medal for tooting on a fife. I heard him talking to you yesterday. Yeah, and how was I to stop him? Piggy, he says, why don't you consider making music your career? <laughs> Piggy Lou, the musician, a blooming non-combatant. I won't do it. He can try, but he can't make me. Aha, and when I'm an officer, perhaps I'll invite you in to have a glass of sherry wine on mess nights, Mr. Lou. I'll be a blinking officer before you are. I'm going to join up with the regulars just as soon as I'm old enough. Piggy the musician. Ah, <laughs> oh, Stewie. Right at the moment, I don't feel like fighting even you. I heard in the barracks are going to take uh, Tom Kidd along. He's to be the bugler. Of course, he's 18, though. That he is. But I can plaster the wall with him any day. And with one hand behind me back. Perhaps we can hit him around a bit. Just enough so he can't bugle no more. You get hold his hands, Piggy, and then I'll kick him in. No, the... no, no. They, 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 they still wouldn't take us. Our reputations aren't what they might be, you know. Oh, well. I'd as leave stay here and do a bit of love for myself. With our own regiment going into action? Why, I'd as leave have my... Hey, look who's coming. It's the bloomin' colonel herself. And so it is, all alone. You know, Jake and me lad, I think I'll have a little talk with this colonelship. Have you gone to have what they eat? Oh, the colonel's a good old beggar. Yeah, hold me pipe. Blimey, now we're in for it again. <clears throat> I, uh, beg your pardon, sir. Eh? Well, Piggy, are the drums in revolt? Am I to be pulled down right here in the open? No, sir. I'd, I'd like the pleasure of a word with you, sir. Hmm? All right, go ahead and have it. I'm asking you, sir. If you thought the world and all of your regiment and it was going off to active duty without you, sir, then how'd you feel? Mm, oh, I'm afraid I should feel a bit left out of things. And worse. Mm. It's as bad as being a blinking civilian, if you'll pardon me, sir. But that's how Jake and me feels about it. You've no idea what a campaign can be like. Why, you'd flop on your face in the first 20 miles. No, we wouldn't, sir. We're good at marching. I've told my girl I'd bring her back a medal. I've just got to go. And anyhow, if I stay here, the bandmaster will make a blood... I mean, a blessed musician out of me, sir. I see. I think you could pass a physical... Oh, not the slightest doubt of it, sir. We're both of us very healthy for our age. Please, sir. All right. I suppose it's unheard of for a border regiment to take drummers along on active campaign. 
But if you get past the medical officer, you can both go along. Blimey! Jacob, did you hear that? We're going up to the front. I mean, thank you, sir. Uh, carry on. Uh, I mean, yahoo! <laughs> The regiment marched out of the station two days later, and all those left behind lined in the road that led past the parade ground. The band stood by and played them out, waiting to fall in at the foot of the column. And although Jakin perspired and beat on his drum manfully to cover up, it was quite evident that Piggy Lou was not with the band. Jakin kept glancing at the cedar hedge behind him, and I had a rather good idea why Piggy was being detained. Be awful careful and take real good care of yourself, Piggy. You're so venturesome. I'll worry all the time. It's odd, Chris. I'll grant you it's odd, but what's a man to do when his regiment's called off to active duty now? Here, give us another kiss. Oh, Piggy. Mm, that's more like it. You just stayed here like you ought to. You could have had as many as you wanted. And if I'd done that, Chris, you wouldn't think anything of me. Like as not. At least I'd add you with me, Piggy. And all the thinking in the world ain't like kissing. And all the kissing in the world ain't like having a medal to wear on the front of your coat. Who cares about a medal? Just stay with me, Piggy, darling. And I'll love you true forever. Aren't you going to do that anyhow, Chris? You said you was. Of course I am. Be lots more comfortable if you stayed here. No, oh, don't take on about it, Chris. I'll be coming back. And I'll marry you someday, too, I promise. But when... Years and years, perhaps. You'll be careful, won't you, Piggy? Oh, man has to take his chances in the army, Chris. Uh, but if it happens, I'll I'll be thinking of you right to the last. Oh, don't talk like that. Oh, now, here. Give us a kiss. Piggy, get yourself on over here. We're about to fall in. Well, I've got to go now, Chris, my darling. Don't you be forgetting me. Oh, I won't ever, Piggy. Here, I made something for you to take with you. Hmm? What's this? It's a button bag. All the regular soldiers carry them. I, I put some of my hair in it. Well, now, that's awful kind of you, Chris. I, I guess it ain't made so good, but I didn't want nobody else to help me. Not even Mum. Oh, I'll carry it right over me heart, so long as I'm alive. <laughs> Don't say things like that. Piggy, come on. Give us one more kiss now. I can't stay no longer. Oh, Piggy. Goodbye, Chris. Take care of yourself. Bye, Piggy. Be careful. Be careful. I'll be coming around to see you, Chris, my darling, when I get back from the war. Piggy. Well, it's about time. And lucky we're not both in trouble. Here, stick this blinking fife in your ugly mouth and blow on it, petticoat chaser. Oh, shut up and beat your drum, soldier, before I decide to pound in your blooming head a bit. Tell the colonel he can shove off now. <laughs> And so the four and fit went north to the wars, first by troop train, and then on foot when the last railhead left them with a seven-day route march before they'd reached the front up ahead. And during those seven weary days, the regiment began to crack. Men weren't hardened to the long miles of marching, and they found themselves dead tired before the noon of each day. The food was bad, and the water was worse. And on the second day, the snipers started in. They would hide in the tumbled rocks of the low brown hills beside the road and wait for the column to pass. And the first sign of one would be a flash and a puff of smoke and some man on the long line of march would die without ever seeing the enemy who killed him. <coughs> and even at night, the tired and nerve-shattered men could find no rest. If anything, the night hours and the dark tents were a good deal worse than the daylight hours on the dusty road. Oh, I'll stew your blooming gab until the morning, Piggy. I've got to get myself some sleep. As if I ain't marched just as far as you have. Oh, me blooming feet's killing me. Serves you bloody well right for getting us into this. We could have been back at the station of living on the fat of the land. And halfway to becoming musicians, like as not. In which case, I'd be asleeping in a regular bed. Having decent Charlie for once. I'm afraid you're not the army type, Jakin. Perhaps I shouldn't have talked my friend the Colonel into letting you Shut come. Shut up, Mary Jakin! Before I come in and take a belt to you. Yes, sir. 
You don't have to call a blinking sergeant, sir. That ain't no harm in it. Excellent wing. Stay in your tent. Piggy, that's another one of our sentries got herself killed out there. Pinky beggars can sneak up in the dark without making a sound. Then they take their bloody long knives and slice a man open as neat as you please. All right, hold your fire and see what you're shooting at. I wonder what they look like, Piggy. Those are these here pathans. Oh, what's it matter when we can't even carry rifles? I ask you now, Jakin. Look at that. How's a man to get himself a medal when all he's got for a weapon is a blooming fife? <laughs> Late afternoon of the seventh day, weary, savage, and sick, their uniforms dulled and unclean, before and fit rendezvoused with the Highland Brigade. My lads, here comes the new regiment, the poor and fit. Poor and fit, eh? <laughs> May I ask what it is they're fit for? <laughs> some of the men bore wounds, and some were stretcher cases. But the real casualty was the regimental morale. These raw conscripts had marched out of their station in the south with a band playing. And somehow they'd imagined that they might march glorious into battle the same way. But no band played when they slogged sullenly into the brigade encampment. Hey, Piggy, think we have found the blinking war at last? And what else? Ain't that a full-grown general old colonels are talking to there? Blimey, look at them chaps over there are wearing petticoats. A lot, you know, they're islanders. And I've heard a man best take no liberties with them. One activity might have aroused the interest of the regiment, as tired as they were. Rifle practice the enemy. And with all 700 rifles blazing together, that's the way they felt. We've had a bit of a tough time of it coming down, sir. My men have been rather mauled, with no chance of a fair return. They only want to go in some place where they can see what's before them. I understand, Colonel. I wish I could let you have a few days to recover, but I simply can't spare you right now. There'll be no need of it, sir. All we're wanting is one good night's rest. I see. Well, you can lay your camp area downstroke from the Highlanders, Colonel. And I suggest you call a general inspection before dark. We plan to attack the enemy position at dawn. So it's active duty you wanted, Piggy. And how much longer do you think they're going to keep us standing here with the bloody daylight barely coming over the hills? Oh, no. We can't have no battle till the blooming general has his morning tea now, can we? Just take a look at all them patents out there on the plain. Must be eight of them to one of us. Right down the line. Then it makes it that much easier to get a medal. And how do you hope to get a medal? Maybe you're going to blow their bloody eardrums out with your little fife. More like it will not even have the chance to see how the beggars look. The band, as you might have heard, is gone to wheel and retire when we reach them rocks, while the regular soldiers go on and attack the enemy. Which, I might say, is exactly the way I'd plan it myself. I got no fondness for being sliced up, sliced up like a blooming leg of lamb. Oh, you got no spirit, you bloody little beggar. Beggar yourself and a bigger one. Them as want spirit can have it. Like as not, I'll have to pound your head a bit before you can... Here we go, Piggy. All right, Charge. Ready now. I call him as crud! Yourself now, Jacob, and step lively. Just keep your eye on me, and I'll make a bloody ear out of you. Only someone had blundered. Someone had misread an order, and the four and fit move out onto the plain to attack the enemy force alone. Confounded, stupid conscripts! What are they up to, anyhow? They've spoiled the whole plan of the battle. It's the kind of a mistake you could expect from a regiment that doesn't even know how to march. At the clump of rock, the band wheeled and halted and continued to play, while the ranks opened to form a skirmish line and moved slowly ahead. Hold steady, laddies. We've had no orders to move out, and therefore we'll stand fast. If the foreign fit wishes to fight like hogs, then they'll fight alone. At 500 yards range from the enemy line, the regiment began firing at will, at will and wildly. In a few minutes, they'd thrown away half their ammunition and blinded themselves with their own smoke. And farther out on the plain, the Afghan army stood quietly, 
throwing occasional well-aimed bullets into the milling herd of green troops. The blooming fools! They're bunching like a herd of sheep. Don't they realize there'll be a Ghazi charge at any minute? Suddenly, from the main body of the Afghan troops, a small band of about 50 Pathan warriors charged forward and fell upon the startled Englishmen. These were the Ghazis, the suicide squad always thrown out ahead of the Afghan army before any main test of strength. Swinging their long, heavy knives, they struck the close-packed British line. Why in the name of heaven don't they take open order? They'll be cut to bits! The four and fit wavered shuddered away from the vicious slashes of the murderous bone-handled knives, rallied for an instant and held, and then broke, turned tail, and ran. Ah, Will you look at them, laddies? They turn and run! You might say they make better speed to the rear than they make to the fore. Is there anything but the fore and fit now? More likely to call them the fore and aft! (laughs) It'll take a lot time to live that one, don't! The poor and aft! <laughs> the regiment took no thought for the wounded, for the men left behind. Nor did they stop until they jammed in the pass that led up the hill. And the band, too, was carried along with them in their panicked headlong flight. All the band except two men. Piggy! Think the bloody beggars can see us hiding here on the rocks? Of course not. Seeing as how they're too busy at chasing our brave comrades. Look at them run, the blooming cowards. Ain't it a fine way now for a British regiment to act? Had we done the same thing, we'd not be left behind here the way we are. What's eating you? You're comfortable, aren't you? Maybe comfortable, but I ain't easy in my mind. Oh, stow it. Hey, somebody's dropped the canteen here. Maybe it's got rum in it. And how can you hope to tell by shaking it? And I'll keep your dirty hands off it. I'll do the trying it out. <coughs> well, is it, Piggy? Is it? No, it's water. Here, yeah, have yourself a free drink on a majesty, drummer boy. <sighs> Look, them Pathan beggars are starting back for their own lines. And keep your head down. Well, now, with the blooming enemy returned, perhaps they'll come out and rescue us. Not them, the bloody cowards. Look at them, Jake. The officers has beaten them with the flats of their swords. Can't they see the Pathans ain't chased them no more? They can't see nothing but their own precious skins. Off them, huh? Maybe we ought to give them a little music. Show them it's all nice and cozy out here now. Oh, no. Taint for me to do nothing like that. You want we should get ourselves shot? Oh, there ain't no enemy close by now. Come on, Jakin. Take up your bloody drum there. You positive there's only water in that canteen? Oh, uh-huh. so like as not you're a coward too. The same as the rest of the regiment. I'll show you who's a coward, Piggy, my boy. And I'll be pounding your head a bit too. The first chance I gets, take your bloomin' fife there and stick it in your ugly face. Well now, so you have got a bit of spirit. Maybe I'll speak to my old friend the colonel about it. Oh, shut up and start blowing. Ready? Ready all? Now! Still, Piggy. Back and forth a time or two in full sight. Then we'll wait in the rocks for the battle to start. Are they watching us? To be sure they're watching us. Ah, yes. They're watching us, all right. Time held still. And even the Afghan snipers forgot their weapons. While two armies watched the tiny red-coated figures marching back and forth on the battlefield alone. Hey, and I tell you certain there's a pair of brave laddies down there. All right, you blinking cowards! Look at them out there! Are they two children, the only brave men in the regiment? The men of the fore and aft lifted their heads, fingered their rifles, and stared without moving. And out there on the silent plain, back and forth, marched Jakin and Piggy. play these blooming instruments all day long? Ain't the blighters ever gonna come back? Shut up, Jake, and keep playing. Well, all I might say is I shouldn't ever let you talk me into this. I ain't cut out for active beauty anyhow. Well, I should have bloody well feel more comfortable if I was back... If I was... Back... Jake. Jake. 
Oh, you blinking heathen blighters, you've killed Jakin. All right, I'll show you who's afraid of you. Two armies saw them die from the sniper's bullets. Two armies and the men of the fore and aft. All right, men of the regiment, what now? Those two at least were brave enough to know how to die. Fix bayonets, ready about, and form skirmish line. This time we attack, and there'll be no turning back. Look at them, ladies, the fore and aft. They're going back to fight. Aye, look at them run. Here's how it should have been done in the first place. They'll not turn in the box again. Hi, right, ladies. And now is the time for us. Four as I know. Here's where we join the fight. Ready. Strike up the fight. By the jump, quick. Forward. Car. Late afternoon saw the Afghan army wiped out. And the general explained to me how everything had gone according to his plan. And how he hoped I'd cable that back to my paper in London right away. I turned and left him then. And walked out across the silent battlefield. Walked out among the silent dead. The two tiny figures lay quite close together. Jakin fallen across his broken drum, and Piggy Lou with the fife still clenched in his dirty fist. A bulge under his tunic caught my eye, and I reached in and drew out a button bag embroidered crudely with the name Chris. I made it for you myself, Piggy, my darling, and I put some of my own hair inside of it. I'll wear it right next to me, Art Chris so long as I'm alive. I thought how Chris would soon forget, and how the world's memory is no longer than hers. The sun was sinking away in the west. The button bag in my hand was soaked and damp. And over the left breast of Piggy's grimy uniform, over the pocket where citations are usually worn, A bright red stain had spread out through the coarse wool, looking so very much like the bright red ribbon that goes with a medal. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and tonight brought to you the drums of the fore and aft by Rudyard Kipling. Adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield, featuring Gil Stratton Jr. as Piggy Lou, Jimmy Ogg as Jakin, and Eric Rolfe as Rudyard Kipling, with Jeff Corey as the colonel and Alec Harford as the sergeant, Eric Snowden as the general, Peggy Weber as Chris, and Paul McVeigh as the Highlander. Music is conceived and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Next week... You are drifting on the burning, glossy surface of a tropical ocean, alone on a tiny raft, with three murderous companions from whom you cannot escape. Next week, we escape with John Russell's gripping story, The Fourth Man. Good night, then, until the same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.